Mary, and they were sitting opposite of the grave. Now on the next day, at the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together with Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that when he that um, we remember when he was still alive that that deceiver said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, give an order for the grave to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, the disciples may come and steal him away and say to the people, He is risen from the dead. And that last deception will be worse than the first deception. Okay, they, they, his, his whole life they've seen as a total deception. But Pilate says to them, verse 65, You have guards. You go and make it secure as you know how. And they went and they made it um, grave secure along with a guard and they set a seal upon the stone. And so that stops it there. But it's interesting to see that, the, you know, yes, they were a bunch of donkeys. They were a bunch of quote unquote jack taxes. I mean, these guys just, I mean, they're, and you have to stop and you have to ask how can you be so, you know, scripture? You're the religious people. You, you're, you're watching for the Messiah to come. How can you be so arrogant and so caught up not to recognize it at all? And to me, the only thing that can be said about that is that you can know Scripture back and forth. But if you don't allow it to penetrate your heart, if you truly don't realize that, hey, he died for my sins, just like Old Testament Scripture said he was going to do, they weren't expecting the Messiah to come like this. Even though Isaiah said he would come as a suffering servant. They didn't expect him to come like this. They sure, I, I have no, I, have, I really can't grasp in my mind what they were expecting. I mean, I know they were expecting some sort of a Messiah that would come and take over the Roman government and everything else. Even his disciples thought that. David. You mean David. Huh? Like, David. David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, coming from David and having that authority and stuff like that, yes, I'm going to Establish my kingdom, you know, and, well, it's not even right up here anymore, but, you know, my king, and, I mean, Jesus, uh, through three years of ministry, you know, he was establishing his kingdom, but then what people didn't realize is that the kingdom he was establishing is the, is the same kingdom that he told Pilate. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. It's not an earthly kingdom. It's a heavenly kingdom. And so people, you know, us, we are part of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is here. Okay? It begins in our hearts. His kingdom will last forever and ever, as Scripture says. From the time we accept Christ, we are entered into that kingdom. That kingdom started with Jesus. Okay? When he died on the cross, it is finished. Okay? The veil has torn. We have open access to God. I don't want to die too much. Thoughts? Questions? One thing that always kind of Chronologically, put it a, a sentence after a, the resurrection. Paul writes in, um, I think it's in First Corinthians. Paul writes says that Jesus.